but there's, there's two reasons for life to become multiplanetary, life as we know it to become multiplanetary. I think one is the defensive reason where we, we just, I think we want the, the light of consciousness to not be extinguished if something would happen to Earth. Yes, elephant in the room. Elon Musk is a controversial figure, especially after the US election. But please understand that today, in this video, I don't care about politics Elon or Twitter Elon, but I want to talk about SpaceX Elon. And uh, if you clicked on this video and you're still watching at this point, then you probably want that too. Why did I have to choose Elon though? Because at the moment, he is the most consequential influence pushing for space exploration. And also because he is absolutely 100% right about space. We need to preserve humanity in a way that everybody with children completely understands. You know, life might very well turn out to be abundant in the universe, but right now, life on Earth is the only one we can be sure of. And the same is true of humans as the only known sentient intelligent life form. Now, sure, our track record so far hasn't been exactly stellar. I'm the first to admit that we are deeply flawed creatures. But as long as we live, both as a species and as an individual, we can learn, we can improve, we can evolve, we can get better. So yes, we need to preserve life. If we stay on Earth, it is only a matter of time until a comet takes us out, or a nuclear war, or the next crazy virus, whatever that might be. Remember the quote from Fight Club? On a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone drops down to zero. So not only should we go to space, we must go to space. Again, you can fault Elon for many things, but he's clearly not stupid. Even though a lot of internet people say so. And I don't think he's a superhuman genius either, even though a different set of internet people say so. But he's clearly smart and accomplished. And you just cannot deny his superpower. Getting shit done. Actually doing things. He doesn't just think about space exploration and does some cute interviews about it. He founded SpaceX to build actual rockets. And it was never his goal to just fly into low Earth orbit or to make money by delivering satellites or even to return to the moon. SpaceX has formulated a full master plan for colonizing Mars, for building an infrastructure that can get a million people to Mars in this century. And there is a one hour version of this here on YouTube, which I will link somewhere here so you can watch it because it's actually quite amazing. Especially as it's already almost a decade old at this point and a lot of the things that he promised back then have happened now. Remember the rocket caught by the tower recently? That is the system that can get us to Mars. The booster launches the spaceship into orbit where it is refueled by another spaceship and then flies off to Mars. During an optimal transfer window, this journey will take less than 100 days. The spaceship can then be refueled on Mars and return to Earth. And again, all of this is possible with current technology, even though a lot of engineering is still necessary and a lot of things still have to be demonstrated for real. Mars is a logical first step for colonization. Arguably, it's the only logical step starting from Earth. And once a base has been established, the same system of rockets and spaceships could be used to move out even further, to moons of Jupiter or Saturn. In terms of pure technology, all of this could be accomplished in this century. But just because something is conceivable does not mean that it will work though. I mean, can it work? Nobody really knows at this point. Maybe it's too ambitious. 
maybe it will be too difficult. Maybe it will be too expensive. Maybe it is just too early for a grand operation like this. Like, life on Mars under current technology will be inconceivably harsh for humans, at least for the coming decades. High radiation, low gravity, just recycled air and water, no nature, no outside, nothing. I'm just not sure that people can endure this long term, especially people born in this century. Also, a project like this will always draw criticism, that we have so many unsolved problems here on Earth, that billionaires should use their money to solve hunger or poverty or homelessness or cancer or climate change. Especially if that billionaire is Elon Musk. Someone will always come and say, stop wasting your money and time with all this space fantasy. We have real problems here down on Earth and once we've solved that, we can go back to space. The thing is though that uh, this will never happen. There will never be a right time and there will never be a time when we have fixed all of our important problems. Because as soon as you have fixed something, the next biggest thing is now the most important problem. From the perspective of people in the past, say the year 1624 or 1724, we now live in unimaginable privilege and luxury and have solved all of their important problems. Today's perspective on this is very different though. And as Elon pointed out, there is a very distinct window of opportunity right now. For the first time in history, we have a serious shot at colonizing the first planet outside of our home planet. It's a chance, maybe not a great one, maybe we'll get a better one in future, but right now, this is what we've got. There is currently no reason to think that this might change soon, but it could. Remember the first act of Chris Nolan's Interstellar? This is not likely, but it is a possible future. What I said in the intro is true. We need to preserve human life. But also, we need to preserve our spirit. Humans thrive on challenge, on an undertaking that is, yes, very hard to pull off, but also great. We should always have a frontier that we can push against and uh, no one understands that quite like the Americans do. We now live in a time where we suffer more from loss of direction than loss of life and from having no goal than having no food. There are actually far more people that are obese these days than starving, while the rates of depression and mental illness have never been higher. We are at risk from stagnation, malaise and decline because there is such lack of meaning in our modern world. And I don't mean to say that flying a few spaceships to Mars will cure our society, but long term, being explorers and looking up at the stars again could very much shift culture. In the long run, we will either conquer the stars and live forever or die on Earth. So we might as well try.